welcome from day one here at the Johnston's Paints Tour Championship, where this crowd are ready for another gripping night of snooker action here in Manchester. <laughs> players we begin on table number one with a finalist from the international championship this season mr tom four and he's a 25 time ranking event winner and a three-time world champion he's a welsh potting machine mark williams <laughs> Table number one, where we will play to a finish. We begin with the legend, three times UK and four time world champion, the Wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins. <laughs> And his opponent, the reigning shootout champion, who earlier this year also claimed the Players' Championship. He is the pistol, Mark Allen. <laughs> At four frames, I think both players would be equally content. That is not the case here. Whole lot better than John Higgins, and that's why, as Ken Darty and Alan McManus said in the studio, it's vitally important for Higgins to get off to a good start, as he did this afternoon. If he doesn't, I think Alan when you're ready, mate. won't breeze through. He doesn't play that way anymore. But he'll certainly win the match. The ninth frame. Mark Allen to break. Higgins demoralised at the end of the afternoon. Can he boost morale with a good start tonight? The yeah, first session was full of really top qualities match snooker they had everything really <laughs> great safety great building but i agree i think john needs to get a frame in the board quickly ideally this first one to feel like he's back in control in this match He'd be able to shrug off in his prime, losing those last three frames, but not sure whether his temperament is as rock solid as it used to be. That's the reason why he follows one bad shot with another and follows one bad frame with another frame. It's just not the way he used to be. No, bro, nothing wrong with his game, as we've seen in the, the first session. It's all about temperament, I think. There's nothing wrong with this man's <laughs> temperament. Focus. Three time winner already this season, becoming a serial winner every season. So close this match in so many regards, including total points. Just four points between them. Higgins of the early exchanges. Alan, though. 
last three of the afternoon. The one that hurt the most, of course, the 57 minutes of the, the seventh frame. And let's not forget the last time that John Higgins played in the Tour Championship. And Clan did know two years ago it was the final against Neil Robertson. He was 9 4 up and lost 10 9. Seven. Yeah, I think another thing I would question maybe about John Higgins is his belief. Does he still believe that he's one of the best players in the world? Because he should do, because he still is. It's a fact. Eight. But it's a lot easier us saying it in here and him actually believing it himself. But that opening red from Mark Allen was, well, it was Mark Allen in a nutshell, really. Only hitting the cue ball as hard as it needed to be hit for the perfect reaction. 13. Fourteen. Twenty one. Twenty two. Play to perfection. It's exactly where he planned to leave the cue ball for the black and the stun into the red. A little bit of right hand side to help the cue. Played as well as it could have been. 30. Stamping his authority already on this second session, Mark Allen. How many times during the course of a season do we see that where a player is taken off by a, a loose logo? One important point to note, he's got a, a newfound reputation 37. as a grinder, as a very hard, uncompromising match player. And that's undeniable over the last two seasons, but he's also still a very heavy scorer. His century this afternoon was his 40th this season. Forty-three. Forty-four. Forty nine. In these double session 50. matches, momentum is so important if you've got it in your favour, and Mark Allen obviously does win in the last three frames. He wanted that to keep that momentum going early in this second session. That's exactly what he's doing. Fifty seven. Fifty-eight. Some something Kinda beat somewhere. Didn't put him off potting the ball and he's nicely on the black. But yeah, Mark Allen would have known how 
deflated John Higgins would have been at the end of that session. And his intention tonight was to be, well, to keep piling on that misery. 65. Higgins will need snookers if Alan Potts this red and any colour. Sixty-six. Well, in keeping with these cautious, conservative approach these days, I can't imagine Alan will do anything outlandish positionally. Seventy one. Mark Allen, seventy one. A very solid start to the evening, but not quite out of the line yet. Five reds and therefore sixty seven points on the table. Higgins needs one four point penalty snooker. Five reds, five blacks, and all the colours to force a respotted black. Is that now and just the kind of frame, what? Stephen, that Mark Allen would have wanted to play? Yeah, it's been an immaculate first frame of the game for Mark Allen. It really has. Flawless. Yep. Frame conceded, Mark Allen won in the frame. Higgins concedes and for the first time since 1-0, Mark Allen is ahead. He's won four consecutive frames for 5-4. Mark Allen, Northern Ireland's Tenth finest. Frame. John Higgins to break. Halfway to what would be his third victory over John Higgins this season. He beat Higgins 6-2 in the semi-final of the Champion of Champions. 6-5 in the first round of the Masters. Higgins has won their two most recent encounters, though, in ranking events. German Masters and Welsh Open, both by a score of 5-2. I can tell you the king of kidology, Mark Williams, <laughs> has taken the first frame from Tom Ford very nicely, potted some beautiful balls in winning that one quite comfortably.
one. Very well cued. <clears throat> you felt you had to put a ball soon. Just for his own a bit of confidence, a bit of belief. And that would have made him feel good. Four. Clever positional shot. Put the cue ball in an area where he was going to give himself the choice of three reds. So, go wrong. Five. Now, one way of getting yourself back in the match and feeling 100% is by winning a frame in one visit. That's what John will be looking to do here. And then he'll feel he's back involved after losing four frames in a row. 12. And that's why the Tour Championship is such a wonderful tournament. Best of 19, 30. a proper distance. I think I said this when we were commentating together at last year's event, Stephen, but when you were winning everything in sight, this 20. is the kind of tournament you would have relished. Yeah, absolutely. A chance to play against the other best players this season over two 21. sessions. And after this, you've got a couple of weeks break just to get your game as sharp as you can before the World Championship, but... Yeah, the whole player series, actually, not just this one, the whole series I'd have loved to take part in. Real test of 28. How informed you are in any one season against the other best players in the world. However, that cannon's gone wrong. He was playing the cannon for a red to left corner and got into the cue ball a bit much, so this red is obviously more difficult to the right middle. Actually, half ball that ready hit first, the other side of it, to leave the other one to left corner. Really got into the cue ball too much, which is sometimes a sign of just gripping it a little bit too tight at the butt end of the cue. A bit of tension. But that's a good shot to the situation. Forty-five. Right, His break building really is supreme. It always has been. And that gives you 52. an idea. Fifty-two. Mark Allen is at 92% is excellent, but 96% for having control of that cue ball. I mean, if you, if there's any amateurs out there, who got a chance to play on these cloths, well, you'd see how difficult it is. 53.
58. Already today, he hit a pink when trying to squeeze through for a red, so the open one, not in consideration. But it wasn't an issue anyway. 59. Yeah, I was just about to say this wouldn't be a good time to lose that tight control of the cue ball. And enough reds available for a counter attack from his opponent. 66. But reached the stage where red and black. 67. We'll leave Mark Allen needing a snooker. And he'll want to put at least one more red just to stop Mark coming back to the table. So important to win these frames when you're in control of them rather than have that 10, 15, even 20 minutes delay the opponent's play for snookers. 74. Seventy-five. There's been some start to the evening session from both players, you have to say. This match is uh, brewing up nicely. Eighty-two. Highest break for Higgins so far in the match. Eighty-five. And it will remain so. John Higgins, 82, and the frame. Nevertheless, that was stopping the rot in style. Higgins and Mark Allen back on level terms. It's 5-5. Five, five. We are watching two players well used to being in the spotlight. Mark Allen and the 11th John frame. Higgins. Mark Allen to break. This match started out. Best of 19. Now it's been reduced to best of nine from here. <laughs> and for the second time today, Mark Allen leaves a red to middle off his break. That is beautiful. That really is beautiful. <laughs> Not have struck that Four. any better. I mentioned about momentum changes, and John Higgins is hoping to create Five. a bit of his own here. Going a little bit of a run, a little bit of a three or four frame burst, which are so important in these long matches. The Tour Championship started in 2019. A couple of times, John Higgins didn't qualify. <coughs> and that may be one of the reasons. He's not as consistent as he used to be. Just when you think he's on a roll, building up a head of steam, that creeps in. Yeah, they're, they're easily what? missed because they're into a blind pocket. 
And what I mean is when you're looking down the, the cue, the cue ball, you can't see the pocket in your eye line. It still should never have been missed. Especially when he was in such a good flow, a good rhythm. Beautiful strike Eight. from Mark Allen. You can see the acceleration in the cue ball through the pack. Nine. And that positional shot is, is so far wrong that it's left him with a pretty nice angle in the blue to the far right corner. Fifteen. Mark Allen, 19 years a pro, understands the fabric of matches, the way they work. He knows if he can make the most of this chance. Presented by a Higgins miss, that will hurt his opponent. And in a match of even lengthy status, there's only so much hurt you can take. Yeah, no doubt to me, there will be a frame that is a scrappy frame. Maybe goes to over half an hour, 40 minutes. What puts even more importance on these frames when you get in, winning in one visit. winning them with as little stress as possible. If you've been with us since the start of the program, you'll have heard Mark Williams talk about his chances in the tournament in an interview with Rob Walker. My opponents holding all the aces basically he said, I haven't touched my cue for a month. I've been playing pool in China, only just come back. Well, guess what? Mark Williams is 2-0 ahead, playing lovely. Thirty. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Mark Allen's average shot time for the first session was 29 seconds. It's already come down to 27 in this evening session so far. OK, partly because he's been at the table scoring. As I keep saying, there isn't a player out there that doesn't benefit from picking up the pace a little bit. 43. 
44. Just an awkward little angle in the blue here. I mean, if anyone can hold the cue ball, it's Mark Allen. Yeah, see that, just a little soft screw. He was never going to be perfectly on the red. 49. There. Well, unless there's a plant on the next shot, this shot here is the important one. He's going to win the frame at this visit. Angle on the color to open the four reds up. 50. Now, from this angle in the blue, possibly it'll be top spin, left hand side of two cushions into the four reds. Because he, as you can see, he can't go directly because the pink's in the way. Looking to see if there is any plants on, possibly to left middle. It doesn't look far away. Yeah, directly, that's just skimming the near jaw, but of course it can be manufactured. Fifty-five. The red that's going to make contact with. I'm not sure if the red that's touching it is in the way of getting to the pot and angle for the plant. I think this is just a safety, possibly. Can he get to the plant? No, he couldn't get to the the right potting point. Needs a bit of luck here. Mark Allen, 55. Mm, that's past the yellow. No, it doesn't. But no damage done. You can see the disappointment on Mark Allen's face. He's players at this level and against this level of opponent, desperate to win frames in one visit. Yes, and he's well aware that the value of a lead is largely dictated by the position of the remaining balls, and in that regard, they're looking good for Higgins. If he gets the chance, the clearance readily available. Bold, but with object ball and cue ball so close together, cutting back into a blind pocket that's a long way away. That really is high tariff.
taking over a minute for this one. Understandable, because there are so many options. Needs to get clarity of thought. red to the left middle pocket off the other red the safety was the priority good news bad news there he's supposedly contained Alan but the table's now a lot more awkward Tactically, that's one of the best shots he's played throughout the day. Foul and a miss. John Higgins six. Very back here. Yeah. Have it for the pink, please, all. So. No surprise the cue ball is being put back, would have been a standard. Not just the pink, of course, to, to think about. Close, Touch towards the blue. Touch this is a good team when it comes to a bit more. replacing balls. Yeah. Paul Collier and his marker, Olivier Martil, both of whom have officiated a world final. Let's have a look on there. I thought it was just full ball, I thought it was when I looked at the line, but. Let's have a look. On there, that's quite close, isn't it? What do you, th what are you saying? All which way? Let me check. <coughs> Diagonally towards the black, like a few millimeters. More, more. Touch more. Right, so that, that lines up on there, but obviously that's not exact, so... Yeah, no. What do you think there? Yeah? You all right? Yeah, thanks. It's a laborious, some would say tedious process, but it has to be accurate.
one. Yeah, you just mentioned it, Phil, five, ten minutes ago, the way the Reds were situated. I think if John got any, he was favourite to win the frame, not anymore. The way they are, you can't see from winning it in one visit in this situation. Six. Yeah, I was just looking there. The two reds. Okay. John Higgins. The six. distance between the cue ball and this two reds, but they're. If he, if he had his hand on the table, he might be tempted with the plant, Mark Allen. And the cue ball being close to the cushion, I think that's taken that shout out of the equation. Mark Allen is tactically astute, but getting involved in a game like this with John Higgins is a, a dangerous occupation. Okay. At the recent invitation event in Saudi Arabia, <coughs> Mark Allen won a remarkable match against Mark Selby, 4-3. And towards the end, he was extremely fortunate. He was there also. John Higgins has had a look at those two reds I mentioned a minute ago that Mark Allen could have played if he had ballen, sort of ball further away from the cushion. John's taking it on, though. Played with a, an element of safety. I knew he wasn't going to leave Mark anything easy. But there is a pot on. One of those instances where the, the safety shot looks just as difficult as the pot here. two in front so color and one more red I believe John Higgins need a snooker but that's not going to be any easy task not nicely in a color and both reds are awkward knowing the the match player that he is I wouldn't be surprised if the colors going safe here rather than the pot being taken on
the applause from across the arena. Mark Williams has come back from the final, and it's Tom Ford who's been thrown in at the deep end. And right now he's sinking 3 0 down. Mark Allen won. These are the sort of frames that can separate players in these long matches. The frames that that you can pinch, the ones you're not supposed to win, can be so important come the end of the night. That's why it'd be a huge frame for John Higgins to win. I know, Stephen, you practiced a lot with John Higgins in his formative years as a pro, and even when he was a teenager, tactically, he was so switched on. It's probably because I was potting all the balls and had to learn safety to keep me out. <laughs> Where's the red? Oh, now then. That could One. be a massive moment. Yeah, as I say, what a chance this is. Pop the red, move the other one off the cushion now. I'm not out of woods yet. Because this green is anything but easy. It's got to play it at pace. You know how tight these pockets are playing. Got to play it at pace to be able to get position on the last red. Yeah, it could be a big moment in this match. As I say, these frames that you're not supposed to win, that if you can pinch them, Four. a real psychological blow against your opponent. Not of great importance which colour he pots off the last red because he will. But how reliable throughout his career Phil has John been in this situation? Okay, the pink and black. But how many Seven. frames has he pinched with clearances down his career? Incredible in this situation. He wouldn't have many players in front of him Nine. at his prime anyway to do the job here.
12. Sixteen. Right, so now we're getting to the well, the crux of the matter really in the clearing up here. He's an angle on the pink to be able to get on the black. I don't think it depends on the angle, of course, 21. but I don't think he'll play to well, I was gonna say I don't think he'll play to move the black, but he's landed absolutely perfectly for him to do so. Should he wish? Couldn't have placed the cuba with his hand any better. Oh, it's just not enough. 27. Just wanted to nudge it over the left middle. And it's a black ball. Shoot out for this 11th frame. John Higgins, 27. The near clearance there was the interconnection of luck and skill. What an important ball this is. Mark Allen, of course, won the black ball frame this afternoon, the frame that lasted best part of 57 minutes. But he's, John Higgins has got first chance to put the black here. This is a big frame. The wizard unable to weave his magic there, but I think he will get another opportunity. If you just look at the body language, Zam, for both players, Mark Allen definitely looks the calmer, the two, I would say. And both will be feeling the pressure at this point. Well, that's because Mark is a winner this season. Or not, he's got that inner confidence. <laughs> Tempting to take the double on here. You've got the best view of it here. That works almost full distance between white and black. Top drawer safety, this is. It really is. And 
four cushions, maybe a fifth. Get the black in the middle of the bulk cushion. And let's hit it a little bit. Use that black to travel. It's a chance. It's quite a thin one. And if you miss this, more often than not, you leave it over the pocket. Lucky knocked in to win frame seven. Ditto here. What a moment in the match that could turn out to be. 6 5 Allen. Four more needed. To Manchester Central and day one of the Johnson and Paints Tour Championship. I'll tell you what, it's brewing up beautifully. Some really high quality stuff. A couple of black ball finishes That's on the it. main table. And here on table two, it's been a terrific start for. Mark Williams, he made a lovely 72 break in the second frame. Tom Ford badly needs to make the most, badly needs to capitalise on this opportunity. He was in first in the frame. He knocked in the black, split the reds, knocked a red into the middle pocket and his head went down visibly. But now the second chance has arrived and he really must grasp Spiking it with up. both hands. Williams, despite his lack of practice despite being involved in pool for the last few weeks he's looking pretty sharp to me yeah i watched him in the practice table this afternoon and 20 30 minutes with him he hardly missed a ball I think that's one of the reasons for the longevity of these three class of 92 Phil. I think they they don't they don't practice, they don't put the hours and hours and hours in that they used to. Because there's so many tournaments. The twelfth frame. John just, Higgins to break. You get all the practice at the venues. Well, this time it's John Higgins' turn to play a substandard break-off. Mark Allen's been in front three times today. 1-0, 5-4, now 6-5, but he's never been two frames ahead. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about earlier on. John Higgins following a bad break off with a bad safety shot. But neither have cost him any points. Struck shot. It's 
absolutely no doubt the game is still there to compete for every title. But as I said earlier, is the belief. Six. Seven. When we came back from break, you might remember, I said that Tom Ford must capitalise on the chance he had on table two. Well, he did. 114 clearance from Ford to get off the mark. Williams goes into the interval, 3-1 ahead. Twenty. Twenty-six. Yeah, slight grimace, John. He's on the shred to right corner. And the pink has gone back on its own spot. And is not potable anywhere. A little bit unlucky. Played the shot well enough. Is he saved by a plant? Yeah, he's desperate to keep the break going, but can't. I mean, he's looking again at this plant, but I think they're, yeah, they're going to that right jaw, and they're not close enough together, the reds. They're not touching, so you can't sort of push the plant towards the pocket. Oh, for this thin red to the right corner. Yeah, well played. And well controlled. 27. He had choices there, none of which were palatable. That really was well recovered. Head to heads between these two. Tight. 12 wins for Allen. 30. 11 for Higgins. And five of those meetings have gone all the way to a decider. So this evenly contested affair, not unexpected.
36. It's proven hard work. It's a little break because the pink and black both out of commission. Thirty-seven. That red was obviously dead straight, so he wasn't being able to play for an angle to get above the blue, get an angle to come back down. So it's in and out of bulk with a cue ball. Avoid contact with yellow or brown. Very good. Very, very good. Forty-two. And his positional success. Rating's gone actually up to 97% now. He's just... Okay, he was wrong side of the blue there, but he's rescued the situation. His cue ball control in this match has been masterful. 43. As both Stephen and I have said repeatedly, it's not a crisis of his game. It is there, fully intact, for all to see. 48. Forty nine. Fifty four. Fifty five. When both players have got in, as I said, second ago, John Higgins, positional success, the high nineties, Mark ninety three percent. It's been a clinic, really, from both players in that aspect of the game. Cue ball is the most important ball on the table. When you control that, the snooker is a lot easier. 61. And that's why swiftly we've arrived on the verge of the frame being won. Sixty-two. That was frame ball. Sixty-two the break, sixty-two the lead. Just four reds and therefore fifty-nine on the table. Frame ball. John Higgins, sixty-two. And no risk taken. Placing the brown on the side cushion just in case Mark Allen gets the snooker and has a chance to clear.
let's just assume that John Higgins does get the job done here. It would mean that he's won six frames today, all of them with at least a half century. One. But of course the guard for him will not be dropped yet. The task not complete. I think it is Mark now, Allen, though. One frame conceded, frame Indeed, judging. Mark Allen goes into the interval. On day one of the Tour Championship, this is a cracking introduction. Allen and John Higgins have shared the first 12 frames. Everything to play for. Coming through the tunnel uh, and in the country box for the conclusion of this one, Neil Falls is alongside. Yes, thank you, Jill. Yeah, looking forward to the rest of the night, and it's already been a real hard-fought match, this. Who is going to stand tall at the end? It's hard to call. Higgins has dug in well, actually. Of course, he was 4-1 up, not happy at the end of the afternoon, but so experienced in these big matches. 13th frame. Here we go, then. Mark Allen's frame break. 13 of a possible 19. Effectively now, best of seven. Higgins just getting himself ready for however long he's left in this match. Of course, he's played so many of these uh, long matches in his career. Not so many of late, of course, because he's not been in finals this season. That's gone very wrong because the Mark Allen break actually gave John an in. But not only did he miss this shot to nothing by so far, but it actually sent the cue ball off in the wrong direction. Should have been back in bulk. A match of this level, a mistake like that, is very avoidable for a player as good as John. Very tough match play One. between these two, as you'd expect. We thought it would be, has been exactly that. And at six all, with a, effectively a best of seven left, you know, we can expect more of the same. Seven. Eight. Red wriggled in. Yeah, they had Ted 12 11 Allen coming in. In matches of more than one session, Higgins actually 4 1 in front. But of course, Allen won that final in Belfast 2021. 9-8, that from 8-6 down, that was the last time they played a, a match of more than one session. Thirteen. Fourteen. Feature 17. of this game, as usual, he's been his cue ball to control all day, I think. And getting on the blue nicely as well, which I know sounds obvious, but if you 
get the right angle on the blue every time, it makes everything so much easier. It's one thing he has done well the whole day. Rather than finishing straight or anything 18. like that, or wrong side. And at 4-1 down, it wasn't looking great, but he kind of dug himself out. Chance to finally break free, I suppose. But I think the fact that he nearly missed it is why his cue ball is not perfectly as planned anyway. I mean, he, I'm sure he must have played the cannon, the red sticking out over on the right side there. But he didn't get anywhere near to it. He's still got this red to right middle. The, uh, through the side door, aren't they? This was another one that he didn't know about. Sort of flirting with danger, but it was still a good shot. The red almost dropped in. 33. Thirty-four. That's an example of what I was saying about getting on the blue. I mean, to finish there, it just makes everything a whole lot easier than taking the cue ball round the angles for your next ball. Absolutely plumb on it. Yeah, we've seen in this match alone what a terrific all-round player Mark Allen's become. The two black ball steals where he's really dug in in frames. Got the better of Higgins twice on the last ball. He scored nicely as well. 40. And temperament is superb. You know, we're here in the heat of battle, the last mini session, where he's thrived so often before, particularly in the last couple of seasons. We saw it at the Players' Championship final. Doesn't mean he's going to win, but... All the elements are there that you need to win. 45. 46. Well, the angle perfect to attack the bunch in some form anyway. Might just try and get off the side of the bunch and... Open a couple of reds up. He hasn't come round to look to see if the red goes to right middle yet. 53. Get the feeling that's the one he's going to be playing. Yeah, and now that red's in, not much more to do to go back in front. Sixty one. Sixty-two. 
blue and red needed. Well, he was deep in trouble at 4-1 down. He wasn't 67. playing well, but dug himself out of it this afternoon. Now he's starting to play really well. 68. Well, again, it didn't go in cleanly. Yes, the frame is one now. 75. This is the reason he's not perfectly on the red. And a few have gone close to missing. Seventy-six. Eighty-one. Eighty-two. Well, this was the mistake from John. He might have fancied this, but he missed it by a long way. And really, it was a bit of a gift that he awarded to Mark Allen, but a gift that you've still got to take, and he has. He's been a beautiful break. Positionally, 89. anyway. Just say one or two have wriggled. Yeah, towards the end of last season, the breaks were drying up a bit, weren't 90. they? He'd maybe gone a little bit too tactical, but I think the balance has been... Much better this season. We've seen it in this match alone. 95. Made that 123 in frame six. 96. What a time to make his second century as the players return for the final mini session. Mark Allen has upped his game. One hundred and two. Yellow stays out, but one hundred and two is the first century the of the season. Mark Allen edges back in front in this gripping encounter here in Manchester. He leads John Higgins seven six. So Mark Allen's second century of the match. One hundred and two. He leads John Higgins frame. seven six. John Higgins to break. Table two, Mark Williams leads Tom Ford 4-1. 1. Another elite event with the three of them. Meantime, I was going to say the class of 92 all here, but John Higgins, big error really. He really caught the blue full there. He didn't sort of skim off it. He caught it full in the face. Yeah, Ronnie O'Sullivan's in action on Wednesday. John's last couple of shots have been ones that he'll be thinking about sitting in his chair. As we mentioned, we showed you the shot in the previous frame, which was the reason why the 102 break started off so comfortably. And the break-off shot, goodness. As Dave said, hitting the blue. We've all been there. <laughs> but it doesn't happen to John very often. Interesting. Didn't try in any way to extend the break. Didn't well, try to punch one. the brown in around the angles. Think of many players that might have done more than just play safe from that. Yeah, Higgins, Williams and O'Sullivan all in this elite event. And uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan actually today, 728 days as world number one. That's a personal landmark for him because that's uh, his longest unbro unbroken spell. 
top of the rankings. We're talking about someone 32 years into his career. And he doesn't play in everything. That in itself, though, might be one of the reasons, might it? The fact that he has kept himself fresh, not played every week in every tournament. Anyway, we'll see him playing, as Dave said, Wednesday. Small matter of this match to conclude, and I wonder how confident Johnny's on this long red, having botched a couple of safety shots very recently. A lot of this game is played between the ears. He hasn't really played a good shot since they came back from the mid-session. And uh, after a while, that will dent anybody's confidence. Yeah, I mean, just leaving aside their respective careers, in terms of right now, this season, the difference between them, of course, is Allen has been winning tournaments. John Higgins hasn't won a ranking event for three years, and he's come close a few times. So that is all there in the background as well. One. Well, I think Mark Allen, if he could get a couple of frames in front, having trailed 4-1, he really would feel that this might be leading to a victory tonight. It might be a psychological Oof. blow. And he's in with this chance of doing that. Yeah, I mean, the match is not close to being over yet, but if he wins frame seven, we'll look back on that he won on the black, but it's not just that. Higgins had pink and black on the cushion. He was in front. He was in, in control. Didn't win the frame. That was for 5-2 with a chance for 6-2 at half-time. <laughs> tried to get Reds into play here, but Eight. sort of finished in amongst them. <clears throat> Indeed. It was hard to really get those reds split from the shot on the black. Not to get the cue ball accelerating into the bunch. But he hasn't managed it. Mark Allen, eight. Well, two mistakes from Higgins this frame have gone unpunished, so that's something at least to take comfort in, if you're John. He was, is he going to get away from the, the reds here? Is it a shot to nothing or not? If it wasn't a shot to nothing, he's a bit unlucky not to be on a high-value colour. It doesn't help the blue being off its spot, but it's there because he caught it on the break-off shot, Higgins. Meantime, a 73 break from Tom Ford to reduce the deficit against Mark Williams on table two to 4-2. Two frames to play there. They play to a finish tomorrow.
Well, I think one of the features of Mark Allen's game now is improved his safety. And that was just, if you can call a safety shot a delightful one, that was it. One for the connoisseur, beautifully put on the cushion there. Very thin contact required on the red as well. Brilliant shot. Why? Absolutely brilliant shot. He didn't want to play it, but he knew that that was the only shot he really had. Give it a long, hard look. Looked at other options. Didn't touch the sides. Just overdone it for the red to left corner. Yeah, long potting has been an area where he's Three. been certainly in front in this match. There you see 74%. That translates to against 46 for Higgins from distance. have taken all about the same. Been in once already with the, an opportunity this frame, but while he might be shaking his head, it surely isn't that bad, is it? For getting from green to, to red from here, there's how many reds that he can land on from either side of the table. Seven. Well, the problem is, of course, he's going to hit reds on the way through to his colour in taking the, the red that is on the left of the table. Can't see how he can avoid hitting a red. So he possibly chancing his arm a little bit. Well, at least the red went in. He didn't want it wobbling and staying over the jaws. Or in the jaws. Mark Allen, eight.
Well, the possibilities of getting that cue ball in the, an awkward area, somewhere down towards where the blue is now, playing a safety shot here. to make sure he doesn't push a red over the right corner pocket here. He came down to check. Well, that's very good. Needs to dig in, I think, John Higgins, this frame. I think how that could have gone any worse, really, that last shot. Pushing two reds over pockets. Mark's been in a few times this frame and not achieved anything. So now, John with his own chance, which I really feel will have to make it count. It's quite a good chance, this. And really, I was he was in the spot of the right. pushed one right over the pocket. Get your jaw, knocking the other one over. It's uh, not a shot he'll be looking up at the replay out with any great fondness. <coughs> Tom Six. Ford's made it a 136 to trail Mark Williams 4-3, so that's the early pace setter for the high break. It's unlikely you would be able to, to last the week, but 
At least he's rallied there. He's 3-0 down, of course. One frame to play. Big visit this, meanwhile, for Higgins. Trying to sort of rediscover his equilibrium in this match. And you never know, you know, if he could 13. win tonight, what this one result against one of the players of the season in a big tournament, a long match, that could really be the start of something. 14. Twenty-two. Mm -hmm. Well, he's on it perfectly, but it's a bit close for comfort. He nearly hit the black on the way through and only just had the pace to go behind it. A little close for comfort. Still very classy player in amongst them. It, yeah. A couple of times at long range today. Shots 29. have gone wrong. Close to black ball. Frames that he lost where they both had shots at the black. They always hurt. One would hurt. 30. Thirty-eight. He did miss a red into that same right corner pocket. It wasn't quite 44. like this. It's more angle. <clears throat> Not wholly dissimilar shot. Key was further across to the right. Forty-five. He's going to need another red after this. Yes, David, he's not going to be very close to that red, I think. Down the right cushion again. John Higgins, 45. Strangely, he did get fairly close to the red. It was what he concentrated on, and somehow the black went astray. I don't think if he was just concentrating only on the pot, he would have missed this. Can't help but have divided concentration sometimes when you're thinking about position.
John is disgusted with that last shot. I mean, he had so much ease, really. It's the red thin, the black's covering the that right corner pocket. It's hard to think he could have gone wrong playing it very thin, but he caught a lot of the red and pushed it up the table, as you saw. It feels like a mistake, which of all players, John Higgins would never make. Yeah, and this has been happening. It's a sort of hangover from failing to pop the black. His previous visit. One. So the green is uh, a problem ball for Allen. Yes, and he put it on the cushion, didn't he, very early in the frame when he was a handful of points in front. Eight. Might be able to move it out here, though. Very effective shot, actually. I mean, not only the snooker, but look at the. Uh, I mean, free balls and all kinds of things here. If uh, if John was to miss, a very deliberate attempt to get the green in play. It's a very good shot all round. This could be touch and go here. Paul Collier will be on the spot. Yellow or red. Which one's going to get hit of the two? Well, it was red or right, but the bad news is where the balls have ended up. I just wonder if the first shot of the frame when he knocked the blue to where it is now, that could possibly save him here, maybe. But it's a chance for Allen, nonetheless, to go two in front. Yeah, I think he might have played a clever shot there, you know, not playing on the brown, Mark oh, Callum, which seemed the natural colour, but of course, with green. green up the table, brown's a little closer to green than it would be back on its spot. All those little things can play a part this very high Five. level. Yes, he's got to play a good shot here, but it, the brown is at hand. Eight. Didn't get enough on it, though. I don't whether he can hold from brown to blue. Might be able to. Got to really drag, drag this hold and not finish straight on the blue. Twelve. Seventeen. Oh, setting up another crucial, very close frame, isn't it? Next couple of shots. Yeah, of course, he's already won two on the black in this match. But before we get to the last ball, it's pink. Didn't get much angle on that blue. This is as good as he could do on the pink. Did he or didn't he? He must have gone, gone for that, I suppose. 
Yeah, that to have been the case. It looks like a sort of a half attempt to get cover behind the black, whichever way he played it. Very well played from Higgins. That really is. In the snooker, he had good control over the impact on the pink. So another frame that uh, really could make a big difference. The difference being that John Higgins just needs one ball. Well, one of the biggest shots of the match for Higgins, this. Having lost the two close ones already, it would be such a body blow to lose another one. It's in his hands. He needs the pink. And we're level again. Feels a huge... Mistake, doesn't it? Huge mistake. And the balls do not forgive you. Six. No, I mean, breaks are important, but psychologically, these close frames feel massive. And this is the third Mark one. Allen, 13 Mark and the frame. one on the black today. And it's made a big difference. This was the missed pink from Higgins. That was frame ball. And he walked away agonised, seeing he'd left it. So Mark Allen is two away from victory, leading 8-6. Dramatic opening day at the Tour Championship in its new home at Manchester Central. And Mark Allen, with the third black ball victory in the match, leads 8-6 against John Higgins. So two more needed. And he will play Ding Junhui. In the quarterfinals, on the other table, they've just finished the session. Mark Williams, an 86 break. The 15th break. In the last Mark frame, Allen to break. To lead Tom Ford 5 3 overnight. They'll be back tomorrow night to play to a finish. The winner there plays the number one seed, Judd Trump. No conviction in that shot at all from John. And you feel that there wouldn't be many times that you'd be saying that about John. He didn't really hit it right. He wouldn't go where he expected it to either. A bit close to the right cushion. It's not going to cost him anything. Except it's going to hurt him like that last frame. Undoubtedly would have. Maybe he's not quite recovered from it. Yeah, it's sort of been the story the last season in a bit, really. You know, he's playing well. He's playing very well at times, but then just the odd thing happens and just maybe struggles to, to get past it. Yeah, 
I mean, look, the thing with John is he's in this tournament, isn't he? He's in the top 12 on the one year. He mentioned that before the match. He's doing something right. But given he's, with everything he's won in the game, it's been a while since he has won anything, so he's setting a high standard for himself. assume that that wall will go up after this frame. There are a few, few hopeful people on the other side uh, watching on the monitor. You might see it with their own eyes in due course. Yeah, that was a lot at stake on that shot, a lot riding on it. Keyboard going up towards reds. Give John a bit of renewed hope because it was definitely a chance. And he might be able to pop this red up the table into the top left. It seems to go. Yep. Signs have been unsettled in the last couple of frames. Eight. She never lost the previous, but did. Now this has turned up. Yeah, and he's a man who's stolen so many frames down the years. Unlikely positions. It sort of happened to him a little bit today. Aye. But there's still only two frames in it, of course. Yeah, I suppose being 4-1 up, it kind of doesn't feel like just two frames, does it? That's the worry. Sixteen. The one thing he didn't want to do was move that red from the middle pocket. Screwing a series of small extensions on the butt of his queue there. Seventy. Deserves to be on one here. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. He'd have to be really up against this red not to be. 21. Yeah, he's fine. No, the shot deserved it as well. Let's push the black save, which will annoy him. 
But of course, he can win the frame. 22. Without the use of the black. Yes, and it feels like for his own self-esteem, really, he needs to. If he can make a nice frame-winning break, then it just uh, puts what's happened to one side. And you can't survive this long at the top of sport like snooker without being mentally 27. strong. Remember, John Higgins has been in the top 16, the elite group, since 1995, never dropped out. Twenty-eight. Here we are in Manchester. Think of Oasis, great Britpop band. That was that era, wasn't it? And that's when he entered the top 16 as a teenager. Thirty-four. Yes, he just 35. recovered it of a slight mistake that he'd made. Two shots in a row, he drifted out of position, but not now. 40. Forty-one. Yeah, never mind Oasis, it could still be a happy Monday for John Higgins, despite his travails. 46. Fifty-three. Fifty-four. Well, he's kind of taken the scenic route a little bit during the course of this break, but it's still ongoing, at least. That wasn't clean either. <laughs> Feeling the pressure, but uh, digging himself out of a hole and getting back into the match. 56. Well, this red, and Mark Allen will need a snooker. 57. Yeah, it's been a good effort there. So far. A couple of, you know, gone astray positionally, the odd pot wasn't clean, but he kept going. They've kept going in. And John Higgins, despite losing a third black ball frame, he's going to close to within one. What a thrilling start to the tournament this is. Two terrific players. They always seem to have close matches. It was 12-11 on the head to Allen coming in. And could well end up going the distance 64. here. 64. Higgins' his highest break, 85. Of course, he's closing 70. in on a thousand centuries, 993 to his name. Cheers. 71. Yeah, and getting on the black, if this goes in, there's every chance he'll add to it. 78. 
Yeah, this is a tricky one, in fact. 86. Quite a tricky pot from there. Well, he's on he gives 86 the down the frame. Thing is he made a frame winning break, 86. So we're back to only one in it. John Higgins rallying impressively there. Allen's lead cut to 8-7. Gallant 8, John Higgins 7. It's first to 10 to reach the quarterfinals of the Tour Championship. And, of course, more action tomorrow. We'll be kicking off on table one with the start of the match between Ali Carter and Barry Hawkins. Of course, the winner there plays Ronnie O'Sullivan in the quarterfinals. And also Mark Selby and Gary Wilson resume. Wilson impressive this afternoon. He leads 5-3. Overnight. Reminder that Mark Williams leads Tom Ford 5 3 there up tomorrow night to conclude. Okay. So Higgins has steadied the ship frame. there with the 86 John break. To break. In frame 15 of a possible 19. Now, last time he broke off, he caught the blue full in the face. Well, he's played the old uh, plain ball break off shot. <laughs> well, it worked. With a bit of luck, but there you go. He's um, clearly not happy with the break off because a couple of times the red came up the table earlier, then he hit the blue, as Dave said. Now he's gone the old Eddie Charlton break, which was a uh, plain ball. He's becoming more and more of a disadvantage to break, I think, these days. And you'd always elect to break in a match because you could get your opponent in trouble. Now, whether it's the different balls they use, lighter or just that players knock in long pots more frequently, I don't know. But I'm not sure it is an advantage. No doubt in my mind that Mark Allen's safety of the two has been better today. More consistently, as planned, kept John mostly down that end in trouble. John has made the odd error. Yes, he was asking Paul Collie to have a look. There's just a little bit sticking out on that right side, but he's not playing it anyway. Can't be split on much uh, tonight, including overall table time. Seen all sorts of different types of frames. We've seen the big breaks. We've seen, of course, some real battles, including that 57-minute seventh frame. There's the pot success, live pot success. So that's effectively before snookers are required. And again, nothing to choose between them.
get used to these battles because, of course, uh, all matches this week, best of 19, the World Championship qualifies best of 19, and the World Championship itself, of course, they increase in length as the 17 days goes on. Yes, and of course, we're seeing matches over two days here, aren't we? And the Gary Wilson 5-3 up over Mark Selby concludes tomorrow. World Championships, any other event like that where you wake up with a scoreline of a match that's ongoing. That is a good shot for me, is this time. Place on the right-hand side. There could be quite a bit of snooker left in this match from here, given frames might start to uh, become more drawn out as the tension ramps up. He lost control of the red once he hadn't potted it, and it could have left more than he has. The balls have gone pretty safe. Yeah, I mean, the last ball Mark Allen potted in this match was that black, actually, to lead 8-6. 21 minutes ago. Was flying around. I don't think he's flying around any longer because yeah. John Higgins has uh, stepped in. <laughs> One result he has had today.
this very opening top of all the balls that shot very attacking he desperately looking for cover and he's got it so mark allen nodding his head as if he's just witnessed a good shot but actually it's quite a risky shot that john played the reds were going in all directions Of course, this is a, a new venue for snooker. We were here for the mixed doubles at the weekend, but uh, right from the off this afternoon, big crowd in, and uh, what a thriller they've been treated to. Sort of slightly shifted back Higgins' way in the last few minutes, you feel. Alan looking to protect this red near the pocket. I'm not sure it can get through to the sort of slightly to the right side of that red as we looked at it. Part of the other red might be in the way. <coughs> uh, you're playing the conventional safety shot here, or try to pop the other red. No. We might be playing the red off another red. Clearly, that channeled. Has not left the the red to the left corner. An intriguing battle here on this red. Who's going to leave it on? Foul. Yes, that was what I was saying earlier. I wonder John if John Higgins was going to try something like that to clear the red or pot it. I don't suppose he ever thought he was going to go in off into that pocket with the red over it. So, ball in hand. His long game has been a bit in and out today, but this is a really big one. Foul. Oh dear. Mark Allen four. Well, how about that? He's got he's got the keyboard can put it anywhere in the D. And somehow where he decides to put it. Foul. Yeah. Just brush the green with his sleeve. Yeah, I don't think he knew he'd hit it, but clearly Paul Collier was right on top of it. I don't think it moved, but it doesn't have to move. Meanwhile, 27 minutes since Alan potted a ball. Well, that sleep foul potentially could be big. One. Obviously, Paul Collier, the referee, is right on the spot. He's actually looking out for it, of course. Quite an unusual one, isn't it? That you know, he just decided to put it there, so he didn't ever foresee hitting 
four. The green with his sleeve. There it is again. He looked at it as well. He seemed surprised when it was called. Of course, the other thing to see briefly is that Mark Allen, when he came to the table, he couldn't put the... He didn't have ball in hand because John had put it there and he had to stay there. Yeah, I mean, of all the things, you wrote a list Five. of things that could have happened in that scenario. That probably wouldn't have been on it, would it, all of that? But it's got Mark Allen in. It was a great ready knocked in. And now, what a chance. All these could have been Higgins's, of course. Twelve. Yes, he's just about okay. Always the worry he'd hit that red full 17. on. Seventeen. Not be on anything. It's a pretty wonderful chance, actually. I mean, the black, when potted, pots to the left corner. I mean, spot. Eighteen. feeling that's probably the ball of choice now the angle on this red is the easiest color to get on the black 25 Certainly, 26 is available. It's strange, he only looked at it after he'd played the shot before last. So, I think he was fully aware that it was available. Thirty-three. Well, we'll see how many he makes, but it's not always about the actual size of the break necessarily. It's how it began, and, and it was just such a strange start to proceedings with Higgins fouling unexpectedly. Just as he seemed to have the sort of psychological upper hand in the match, even though 8-7 down, the way he'd won the last frame, Allen hadn't potted a ball for nearly half an hour, but it's maybe just swung back again. Thirty-four. Well, one more time. This is a different angle, and well, on that angle, you can see he does he does catch it. I, mean, I didn't doubt Paul Collier anyway, but you, I think you can see it with your own eyes there. Oh, absolutely not. No, no way in the world that Paul Collier was right there. You know, often you see a foul and someone's moved the ball. It doesn't matter 42. if it doesn't move. It, 
just about the contact with something illegally. Well, he's been playing a lot of shots at close quarters. Already rolled in a couple of shots ago. 49. Another one here. No doubt he's give, given his full attention. Going over the black. Not simple. I think because 50. he plays those shots so gently. The speed, it just gives the pocket every chance of accepting the ball. Mistake, and he's not there yet. Meant to completely miss that bit on the right. Determined to continue. Yeah, and he got just high enough on the blue, the red by the pink now, and <laughs> red colour. And uh, 63. He's won the frame. Doesn't quite tell the full story of this frame, though, does it? This break. How he came to the table. Very 64. unusual. He was a great initial ready knocked in. Regardless of what happened to Higgins, he hadn't potted the ball for nearly half an hour. It's already 70 in front. One snooker needed this red. He's surely going to make it 9 7. 70. Seventy one, seventy seven, seventy eight. Eighty-five. Eighty-six. Ninety-three. Well, the red stays Mark out, Allen, but the damage really the truly done by Mark Allen, 93. John Higgins fouling that green with his sleeve. My word, it was costly. And now Allen is one away from the quarters. He leads 9-7. Okay. 9-7 to Mark Allen, 93 in the last frame. Take your seats quickly, please. So he needs one. John 17th Higgins frame. Have Mark to Allen's three to, to stay in the Tour Championship. Just the key moments have sort of gone against him in this match. Obviously, the three black ball frames and then fouling that green with his sleeve and not getting another shot in the frame after that.
One. Well, if he is going to make this comeback, an early in, then the sizable break here just might set him back on track. But losing some of the frames in the manner in which he has always make think it's going to be your day, I think. Anyone can overcome it, John. Can the frame before which he won? Three. With that break of 86 was quite fluent, not hanging around. Well, I suspect Four. some of the same here. Just get on with it. Try not to overthink. Well, that would have seemed very cruel had that red gone in. Yeah, the black only just made it. Nice. Looking at other things, but that black nearly stayed out. The red nearly went in. It certainly would have been cruel. It's a tricky little shot here, though, with slightly hampered queuing. Fairly narrow pocket opening from there. Didn't do anything. Flat on the shot, did he? Didn't try and do anything positionally too ambitious. see the annoyance 20. as the blue stays out yeah i mean the shot before yes the red was a little awkward but he didn't try and get anywhere near straight on the blue because he's worried about missing the red <laughs> problem is at this stage you never know when that could be your last shot in a match well he won't be <coughs> oh uh, <laughs> I'll take Whoa. that back. What a fluke. What a fluke. Well, everything going against Higgins now. He's going to take advantage, but that last shot didn't pop the green cleanly. Keyboard does not travel quite across as far as it might do. And he knocked it into the centre of the pocket. Still got that red to left corner if he wants it. But he doesn't seem to be looking at it even. Mark Allen, four. Uh, everyone's looking all down the line. And whether we can get to the red, the answer seems to be no. Wow, and a miss. Mark Allen, four. Yes, it was a rather surprising red, I thought, to try and hit, lay up to. 
It's not as if that web was close to a cushion. Often the way you would roll up to a ball close to a cushion, out of harm's way, but it was in open play. One. And Mark Allen refusing that red and playing the snooker. Paid dividends. Seven. Eight. Pink spot is now clear when he knocks it in. Back on its own spot. But this is a live chance to close out a match, which he at one point trailed 4-1. Fifteen. Now he's not straight as he'd like to be on this red. He was definitely heading 22. north. Twenty-two. Whether he can dig in and play on the pink to the same pocket. Low on the cue ball. Sort of thing he does very well. You know, he has close control. He's good at little holding shots, although he's straight on the pink, I think. Why well, he's displeased by it. No angle to play with. Twenty nine. Thirty. Now there's a couple of reds which will pot to the left corner. He wouldn't have minded a little bit further up on this, but he can probably drop it in and just land on a red. Mark Allen, the key wall never seems to travel very far when he's in close position, when he's break building. 36. <clears throat> 37. Again, I don't think there's a huge angle. On this, just the wrong side of. Now what? Forty-two. He's building up a nice lead, but he wants this frame to be won at this visit, the match to be over. So the plant, which is not dead set by any means. No, they're way off, so he's going to have to do a lot of straightening of the second red. The 
This looks a, a missable plant. Some plants are unmissable. It does not fit into that category, this one. 44. Looks, he's got a real spring in his step. Is he on that pink to middle? If so, the end of the match could be very close. Yeah, you always look at the body language, don't you? He looked happy with where he'd finished. Maybe not here, though. Could have been better on it. As you can 50. see, he needs red and reasonable size colour. Yeah, just play the little cannon to the pink 51. to leave himself on it to the middle. And this is the ball that should put Mark Allen into the quarterfinals. He's a lovely little cannon, wasn't it? And he does that so well. <laughs> little shots that he plays. Never more 57. so than during the course of this break, actually. Crucial stage. Very much a touch player. Cheers. 58. Well, these players' series events, they're for the elite. They're very difficult to win. Ronnie O'Sullivan and Neil Robertson are the two players of one or three, the World Grand Prix, the players of the Tour Championship. Mark Allen, of course, has won the World Grand Prix. He's won the players. Can he complete the set here this week? He's becoming increasingly difficult to beat. He's very good under pressure. 65. He's won three black ball frames in this match. He's made a couple of centuries, some other big breaks, key breaks as well, including the one in the last frame after the Higgins foul. And once again, he stepped in here and taken the match out. Very impressive. 66. Yes, he can make exactly 100 here. I don't suppose that's right at the top of his list of to-do things, but he still can make it. Yeah, it's been 73. a real battle today. John Higgins has given everything, just come up a little short. Various things have gone against him, clearly the three frames he lost on, 75. The, on the black. The first of them, frame seven, was the, you feel the biggest, because could have been 5-2, he could have been away. Yeah, lovely nudge. Now the century's on. When you lose two black ball frames where both players have shots at the black, all comes down to that one ball. Third one should never have ended up on the black. John should have won it prior to that. All these things are hurtful when you lose. Well, we've been playing just a minute short of six hours. 87. It's always hard fought between these two. You always see all sides of the game. It looks like we're going to finish with a third century for Mark Allen. He finishes in style. Oh, 100 frame and the match. Mark, Mark Allen. Allen. Warm words from John Higgins at the end. So it's Mark Allen who advances to the quarterfinals of the Tour Championship. The crowd here in Manchester have been treated to a brilliant battle. He will take on Ding Junhui for place in the semi-finals, and we'll hear from him after the break. <laughs>